Come on, who's ready to worship tonight? Can we give the Lord a shout? Come on, I believe we can do better than that. Can we give him a shout across the room tonight? When the Spirit of the Lord is there, is freedom. When the Spirit of the Lord is there, is freedom. Freedom and liberty. Freedom and liberty. When the Spirit of the Lord is there, is freedom. Is freedom. Is freedom. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. We invite you in so you can do what only you can do. So you can heal how only you can heal. We pray that bodies will be healed tonight. Blind eyes will be opened tonight. Marriages will be restored tonight in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, you're invited into the room.
giving me life, Jesus. I thank God. I thank you for your resurrecting power. I thank God. The same God that calls Lazarus out of the tomb. I thank God. It's the same God that's calling me today. I thank God. He's the same God that's calling you. I thank God. Yeah. I thank God. Yeah. Oh, I thank
you thank God? Can you lift that up? Oh, I thank God. If you did it before, you do it again. Oh, I thank God. Yeah. Oh, oh I thank God. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is liberty. Oh, I thank God. There's a fire in this place tonight. There's a fire in this place tonight. We are standing on holy ground. Yeah. Oh, I thank God. Yeah. Uh. Come on, Pastor Chelsea, can you prophesy that? See how else it Before you can 
don't have a prayer, sometimes you don't have the right words, but there's another weapon God has given each and every one of you. From the smallest child to the oldest person in this building, that weapon he's giving you is worship.
if you feel him in this place. Come on, can we honor the Lord tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you. We worship you. We lift you high tonight. Let your name be lifted above every problem, above every circumstance, above every impossibility. Lord, we make your name great because you are great and you're greatly to be praised. Come on, give him a great praise. Hallelujah. Oh, you're worthy of a great praise. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, take five seconds and blow the roof off of this plate. room. Woo, Jesus. Woo. Something's about to happen in this place. Come on. Do you believe it tonight? I think we just need to keep on singing or something. We need to keep on worshiping or something. Come on, are you ready to praise God? Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. Oh, 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 oh. Get up off your feet and give God a praise. Get up off your feet and give God a shout. Come on, get up off your feet and give God a shout. He is worthy to be praised. Oh, get up off your feet and you give God a shout. Get up off your feet and give God a shout. Get up off your feet and give God a shout. He is worthy to be praised. Say, get up off your feet and give God a shout. Oh, hey, get up off your feet and give God a shout. Oh, get up off your feet and give God a shout. He is worthy to be praised. We're praising Him. We're praising Him. We're praising Him. Oh yes, we are. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Get up off your feet and give God a shout. Hey! Get up off your feet and give God a shout. Oh! Get up off your feet and give God a shout. He is worthy to be. Come on, come on. Get up off your feet and give God a clap. Get up off your feet and give God a clap. Get up off your feet and give God a clap. He is worthy to be praised. Come on, give him a shout. Get up off your feet and give God a shout. Get up off your feet. And give God a shout. Get up off your feet and give God a shout. He is worthy to be praised. Now give him some praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Woo. Now y'all gonna make me act a fool up in here tonight. I, my God, I gotta preach a message. Look at your neighbor and say, he's gotta preach. He's gotta preach. But save that praise, save that praise, because we're going to go back into it in a little bit. But you can make your way back to your seat. Shake somebody's hand if you feel comfortable on your way back. Tell them God's going to do something good tonight. God is doing something good tonight. Man. Woo. I'm telling you, I'm not going to want to go home, y'all. Y'all are spoiling me. I want to just thank you guys for coming out again after last night, bringing friends, bringing loved ones. I I'm so excited that you're here tonight. The room is full. The atmosphere is potent. And I believe that the Lord is getting ready to do something very special and unique in this service. Do you believe that? Yeah. Amen. If you got your Bible, go with me to the book of John. John 15, verse number 19. I'm going to read from the New King James. John 15, 19. This is Jesus speaking. And whenever Jesus is speaking, we'd be good to pay attention. Come on, someone. John 15, 19. It says, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, 
but I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. That's a strong verse of Scripture. That can be a very convicting verse of Scripture. Jesus says, if you were of the world, then the world would love its own. But because I've called you, chosen you out of the world, the world hates you. I would say tonight that if there is not conflict between the way we're living our life and the way that the world is telling us we should be living our life, then we're not living for Jesus. Because if you're really living according to this word, you will be hated because of it. I don't live based on the twisted morality given to us by popular culture, social media, or the political party of your choice. I live based on the principles in the word of Almighty God. And if you stand up for this, there should be some conflict. You're going to catch some heat. There's going to be some people that hate you because of it. But Jesus says, carry that cross anyway because we're in this thing for souls. Come on. We're in this thing to let people know there is hope in Jesus. And if we compromise, we can't do it. John 15, 19 says, we're not of the world. John 18, 36, just a few verses later, Jesus says this. My kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over. But, but my kingdom is not of this world. That's why the world doesn't get why we live the way we live. Because the kingdom that we serve is not an earthly kingdom. We live for a heavenly kingdom. We live for God's kingdom. He says, my kingdom is not of this world. They'll never understand why we believe the way we believe until they have a face-to-face -face interaction with the God of the universe. He's the only one that can change their minds. 2 Corinthians 3, 18 talks about that. But we all, Paul writes, with unveiled face, no masks, everything out on the table, unveiled face, Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. Paul says if you really have a face-to-face -face with Jesus, if you really see him, then he will leave his mark on you. If you really see him, it will transform you. And who you used to be will not be who you are any longer. There is a problem. If we claim to have had a face-to-face -face with Jesus, but our lifestyle doesn't change. There is a problem if we claim to have come before him with unveiled face and yet we're still doing what we did 5 and 10 and 15 years ago. I want to preach to you tonight just for a, a few minutes from this thought, the mirror in the jungle. The mirror in the jungle. In the early 1950s, a village somewhere in Colombia is raided. Houses are burned. Resources are stolen. The adult men and women are killed. The children are taken prisoner. And a small girl, barely four years of age, is picked up by two strangers that she's never met. A bag is thrown over her head, and she's carried deep into the Colombian jungle. She remembers the feeling of sweaty arms as they held her. She remembers thorns and bushes as they scratched her skin running through that jungle. She, remember, she remembers hearing the screams and shouts of the people from her village. And she remembers 
as those screams and shouts that were loud began to get softer and softer as they journeyed deeper and deeper. Fear and panic quickly became terror. All of a sudden, for no reason at all that she knew of, she is thrown to the ground. And those men that were carrying her, carried her off from her village, run off into the jungle. She hears their footsteps. And as they clear, she pulls the bag off of her head and looks all around her to find that she is completely surrounded by jungle. No friends, no loved ones, no adults, barely four years old in the middle of the Colombian rainforest by herself. She stays in this spot hoping that whoever it was that carried her here might come back and take her home, that, that someone maybe would come find her in this place. She stays in that spot, but one hour becomes two hours. Two hours becomes three hours. Three hours becomes all night, and as darkness sets in, the sounds of the jungle come alive. She remembers hearing growls, various types of growls. She remembers bugs stinging her. She remembers seeing snakes slither past her. And at some point in the middle of the night, she heard what she thought was footsteps. But she immediately notices that these footsteps are different than the ones that dropped her here. She notices that they're lighter, that they're not making the same thud that the other footsteps make. She then notices that it's probably more than one set of footsteps, but there are many as footsteps begin to surround her in that jungle. Bushes begin to move. She sees shadows in the trees. Once again, fear has become terror when all of a sudden, from the bushes, out jumps a two-foot-tall monkey, <laughs> followed by about 30 of his monkey friends. She recalls them exploring her. They, they'd never seen anything like her, but she was about their size. And she says, I remember they were poking at me, pulling at my hair, checking me out. And, and, and Marina Chapman, that's the story that I'm talking about tonight. And I got a picture of her if you have the picture of Marina today. She's nearly 70 years old. I'm not making this up. What you're hearing is the true story of Marina Chapman who wrote uh, in her autobiography about this experience. She would go on to spend the next five years living in the Colombian jungle with the monkeys. True story. They taught her how to survive. She watched these monkeys and learned what she could eat and what she couldn't eat. She followed these monkeys around, obviously limited. She couldn't climb trees. But she said they were so inclusive of her, oftentimes they'd wait on her up there in the canopy. <laughs> She'd get to where they were. They taught her how to find water down there in the trees and, and streams and different things. She lived for five years, not just with the monkeys, but as a monkey. Over time, she forgets where she came from. Psychologists who have studied her have said that there was so much trauma by this experience that, that she forgot her language. Words, she forgot. Family, she forgot. Her past life, totally blanked out by the trauma. All she knows is the jungle. One day, her and a few of her monkey friends are walking through the jungle just like they did every day for five years. And she sees a glimmer in the distance, catches her eye, because she had never seen anything like it before. And she approaches this object, and as she gets closer, she notices that the object begins to move, and it scares her to death. She jumps back. When she jumps back, she notices that that object jumped back. She worked up the courage to come back over to it, and she picked it up. And looked, and when she looked, there was a set of eyes looking back at her. It scared her to death. So she jumped back again, and when she did, that being or whatever it was jumped back again. She began to approach that object. Curiosity got the best of her again. 
And as she approached it this time, she took a second to look a little more carefully. And she noticed this creature, but behind it she noticed that there were a couple monkeys. And not just any monkeys, these monkeys look just like her friends. <laughs> True story. Marina Chapman has a moment as she finds a mirror in the jungle where her past life, all of a sudden her memories come flooding back. And she has this realization right there in the jungle after five years that I, she's looking at the monkeys, am not like them. Marina Chapman was in the jungle, but Marina Chapman was not of the jungle. Marina Chapman was running with the monkeys, but Marina Chapman was not of the monkeys. It was the mirror in the jungle that showed her who she was. It was the mirror in the jungle that showed her who she was not. I've come here tonight to tell you that this world we're living in ain't nothing but a jungle. There are predators, there's traps, there's darkness, but I've come with some good news tonight. In spite of the terrors and the fears of the jungle, there is a mirror, there is a mirror, there is a mirror in the jungle. I came here tonight to give the Lord praise because when I was lost in the jungle, I came stumbling out of a jail cell in Houston, Texas and saw a glimmer down in an altar off of 13111 Bama North Houston. And I remember stumbling out of them bushes of the jungle down into that altar and coming face to face oh, with the mirror in the jungle. Jesus Christ showed me who I was for the first time. Oh, God brought somebody here to come face to face with the mirror in the jungle again. God brought someone here to remember who you are again and to remember who you're not. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. Praise be to God who brought us out of darkness and into this glorious light. I'm thankful that I'm not living like I was living when I was in the jungle. But I came face to face with his glory and his glory changed my life. Come on, if his glory changed you, oh, get up on your feet. Give God a praise. Oh, thank him. You know he's the mirror in the jungle. Where were you when you found it? Some of y'all were in the bars. Some of y'all were in the clubs. Some of y'all were on a fast track to a DWI. Some of y'all were gangbanging. But there was a glimmer. Oh, maybe you stopped by a church and a pastor got up on the platform and told you about a hope told you about a savior and all of a sudden the gang banging stopped all of a sudden the drug abuse stopped all of a sudden I was transformed come on where were you think about where you were and give him praise that he pulled you out We got to come out of the world. We're in it, but we ain't of it. We live to a higher standard. We live for a higher purpose. Sick of Christians living like the world. When you look at them, their lifestyle hadn't changed one bit, but God is calling somebody to catch a glimpse of the mirror again, to get in this word again and see what it says about our lives again. It's time to call sin, sin. Everybody's got an issue. Every last person in this room, don't matter what it is, don't matter where you come from, everybody's got sin. Everybody's got a fight. 
and everybody's got to fight. You're not in trouble if you mess up. You're in trouble if you don't get up after you mess up. The righteous man falls seven times, but my God, he gets back up, comes face to face again, and says, God, I'm going to live right. Come on, somebody needs to drop some habits. Throw the alcohol out of the house. Clean out the pill cabinet. Delete those text messages. Come on. When you really, when you really have a face-to-face -face with Jesus, you'll never be the same. Some people can't understand how we can live for God. But the Lord said, whenever you come to me, he said, I will give you the desires of your heart. I came to find that the Lord gave me new desires. I used to desire to live like the monkeys. I used to desire to live like the world. But when I had a face-to-face -face with Jesus, my life was marked. And from that moment, I'm on a mission to come face-to-face -face with him in every aspect of my life. I want to live right. I want to please him. I want to be a reflection of him in this dying and hurting jungle of a world that we're living in. God is searching for men and women who will come out of that jungle and come into this marvelous life. God is searching for men and women who are ready to take a step of faith and say, God, I want to live my life pointing people to you. Because once you find them, once you find them, it's our responsibility to take that mirror to our friends, to our loved ones, to our neighbors, to the hurting. Because you're the only one, some of them, in your, you're the only person in their sphere of influence that can reach them. And if we don't ever do our part, there are people that are going to die lost. But we have an opportunity, come on, to bring heaven, to bring hope, to bring life. But you got to take it to them. You got to take it to them. I'm thankful that I'm not who I used to be tonight. Some of y'all heard my story. I, I, I was drunk six, seven nights a week, living reckless, living crazy. Got arrested, had a second-degree felony. I was facing 20 years. And it's 20 years, my life was over in a state penitentiary. And I remember in that jail cell coming to a moment where I said, Lord, if I ever get out of here, I'm going to get my life right. And let me tell you something, in that jungle, surrounded by the animals this God that I'm preaching about reached his hand down picked me up and pulled me out and I'm here today with a purpose with a hope for my life because what I'm preaching is the truth and this Savior named Jesus can put your life back together if you'll take his hand tonight he's not one of many he's the one and only we could get on a plane tonight and we could go to Saudi Arabia and I could take you to the green dome where the so-called prophet lays buried, Muhammad. You can see him because people from all over the world go see him because when Muhammad died, he stayed that way. We can get in that same plane and we can go to Candy, Sri Lanka and I can take you to the temple of the tooth where they believe they have the relic tooth of Buddha. And they believe it because when Buddha died, he stayed that way. But if we got in that same plane and I took you to Israel, I could take you to the tomb where the Romans put Jesus. But you wouldn't see a body because Jesus may have died, but he didn't stay there. He's alive. He's the mirror in the jungle. He's searching for somebody. Bring your 
trouble. Bring your sin, all of your jacked up issues, and give them a praise with unveiled faith. Holding nothing back. Oh, he can use a messed up person. He can use a jacked up person. the Lord in this place it's time for someone to catch a glimpse of his glory again it's time for someone to let the mirror in the jungle transform you again what is the thing in your life that's been tripping you up God can set you free tonight what is that habit in your life that's got you slipping God can break that hold over your life He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If God did it back then, he can do it today. If God can do it someday, he can do it today. If you're in this room and you need to have a face-to-face -face with Jesus, step out of your seat and meet me in this altar. Come on, from all over this room. Come with unveiled face. Whatever you've done, however bad you've messed up, the mirror in the jungle is waiting on you. Come gaze into his eyes tonight. Come gaze into the eyes of the master tonight. Come on, from all over this room. God's bringing you out of darkness. He's going to show you who he is tonight. I remember coming down to an altar like this. And I received the spirit of almighty God in a moment. I felt him potent. God wants to give you a tangible touch tonight. The name of Jesus all over this room. Team, you can come. We're going to sing in a moment. If you're in this altar, close your eyes. Stretch your hands up. Put your mind on Jesus tonight. Why don't you leave some old habits behind right now? Why don't you leave that trouble behind right now? Come face to face, unveiled, holding nothing back. Father, I feel you in this room. Touch every broken life tonight, God. Every person that's dealing with brokenness, Father, I pray you would make them whole. Put broken things back together. Bring healing throughout this congregation someone you may be like me and it may look like your life is over but can I tell you it's never too late for Jesus no matter how bad it looks for you your marriage your son your daughter it's not over until God says it oh it says it's over his miracle working hand is still at work right now hands are Team, you could come. We're going to worship. I pray that what's about to happen will transform you in a way that I was transformed. I remember at seven years old, I was never the same again. You're going to come face to face with Jesus tonight. And I believe your life will never be the same. As we begin to sing, why don't you throw your hands up one more time, eyes closed, and just come face to face with him unveiled before the mirror and by his spirit we are transformed tonight come on just worship him just worship him change us again father shape us again God cleanse us again forgive us for the lifestyle we've been living father we want to be right in your eyes I thank you that you're bringing us out of darkness. That you're bringing us into this marvelous light. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
You are the light of the world. You're the mirror in the jungle. just spoke to me and said someone needs to know that your loss is a divine seed for restoration what you lost last year God is going to restore unto you this year I'm telling someone that your pain is not a waste your pain is a seed I thought about Job Job when he had those boils all over his body the Bible said the only comfort that he can find was he would get broken pottery and scratch and itch those boils. The only comfort he can find in that moment was being comforted by another broken thing. Sometimes only broken things can comfort broken things. You may be broken tonight, but God is going to use your brokenness. God is going to use your pain as a testimony that will bring healing to your friends and your family and your loved ones. I prophesy, Joe, that your loss is a divine seed for restoration. Because the Bible said at the end of it all, Job received double for everything he had been through. I prophesied double coming into your life. It's going to be more than what you expected. It's going to be more than what you ever dreamed of. 
Let the broken things stretch your hands up to heaven in this room. God's going to use that pain. God's giving you a testimony. You're just a testimony in the making tonight. Come on, let the broken things lift your voice. Let the broken things worship tonight. this room tonight and you've never made Jesus Lord of your life this is your moment there's no more important moment that you'll ever see on this side of heaven but the God of the universe is in this room and he's waiting on someone to make him Lord if you're in this place maybe maybe you have been around church but you fell off you were back in the jungle, but God is calling you out again. This is your moment to come face to face, unveiled before the Lord, and say, God, I want to live for you. Eyes are closed all over this room. If you're in this place and you need to make Jesus Lord, pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, I believe you are who you say you are. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that three days later you rose again victorious. Father, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, if you prayed that, give them praise in this room. Praise them for those that prayed that for the first time. Come on, can we celebrate with them? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
you found him walking the light, the beautiful light. I'm so glad that I found your light. Yeah. Walking the light, the beautiful light. I'm so glad. Y'all want to go one more night? Listen, listen. We'll go one more night, but I'm going to challenge you. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, Pastor. 7 o'clock. Don't come empty-handed. Bring somebody with you. There's someone in your life that needs to just be in this atmosphere. Because this is the type of atmosphere that will change their whole world. Hey, let's go one more night. Come on. Listen. I got to talk to you for a moment. You don't understand. This was supposed to end last night. Matt, 
Well, put up the, real quick. Hold, well, hold, get ready, Lala, for a moment. Just wait one second. So, I, I, tomorrow night is Matt Austin's birthday. It's Matt Austin's last birthday as a single man. His mama ain't gonna be there. His fiance ain't gonna be there. But are you gonna be there? I, I literally forgot tomorrow's your birthday and we're like, hey, you wanna go another night? Are you sure, bro? So, It, oh, look, yeah. you to become a professional liar one lie two lie three lies a thousand lies and sometimes we come to the house of God and we say God if you can't move on my time then I don't need you or want you God is doing something we're not trying to make it happen it is happening and sometimes listen sometimes we gotta wait on the Lord do we still know how to wait on God the birthday cake has not came out and it's not time to blow out the candle. Hallelujah. I know God, listen, listen. For me, I don't know about you, but God keeps telling me, Esther, the more you press in and the more you worship me, I am unrailing things that have been tight. I am making them loose again. I am making them loose again. And it's a matter of time until they break out. Hallelujah. Until that loved one breaks down, Connie. Until that marriage gets restored. You gotta learn to fight again. Be a man, be a woman. Roll up your sleeves again and fight again. When Brother Matt was ministering tonight, he said something that always resonates me. There are people that God put in your sphere. It, it's wrong to have this much of God tonight and not give it away. It's wrong. It's wrong. I'm, 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 I'm not challenging you. I'm commanding you. Go tell somebody about Jesus. Tonight, tomorrow, before I commanded you, Jesus commanded us to go into all the world. Jesus sets people free. You get people in the presence of Jesus. Racism's gone. Hatred's gone. Addictions are gone. Sickness is gone. Divorce is gone. God is the answer. Man. It's, it's on. We're going to do it. Listen. Uh, Lala, put that script for uh, 3 John chapter 1, verse 5 and 8. Just stay where you're at. Dear friends, you've been faithful to God when you care for the traveling teachers who pass through. Even though they are strangers to you, they have, told the, uh, they have told the church here of your loving friendship. Please continue providing for such teachers in a manner that pleases God. For they are traveling for the Lord. And they, uh, and, well, I'm sorry, and they accept nothing from people who are not believers. So we ourselves should support them so that we, uh, so that we can be there partners as they teach God's truth brother Matt is a full-time 
evangelist minister. And uh, <laughs> he's here because prior somewhere else where he was preaching, another congregation where he ministered, sowed in his life that continued his ministry and brings him here. Tonight, we are going to bless him. He, he, I'm going to let you know about Matt. Matt's never the times he's preached for me, and I'm sure with Brian or, or Pastor Titus, he's never like, here's my contract. This is how much you got to give me. He, he didn't even talk about that stuff. He just wants to preach. But we do need to honor him. The Bible says those who preach the gospel live by the gospel. I want you to get the mindset. When you bless him, it's not just him but it continues his ministry we, the bible says we partner with him in spreading the gospel as much as i love what's happening in our church but we're past the baton to partner with him that his ministry continue for the next church do you catch what john is saying and he says they were strangers to you some of you don't know him on a personal level and I'm gonna tell you right now, he's easy. He sleep, he ain't in some he ain't in no five star. He's in my basement of my house. I actually threw an M80 out the window today, and he got kind of tripped out on me. There was a bunch of geese in my backyard. I had to scare him away. Anyway, can we bless him? But I know this would be a blessing the soul into his life as he gets ready to this new chapter getting married tomorrow we gotta huh celebrate no tomorrow's the birthday t t t I, got, I got a word for him for his birthday I really do so tonight if the host whatever comes in we're giving it to him if the host could raise their hands with an envelope or they, you can text to give, just put love offering, whatever, just put it on there. Don't make a difference. It's all going to go to him tonight. And of course, we're giving him for every night too, but this is not about, I mean, and plus we're dragging him to stay out longer, okay? Stay with me. <laughs> Who's going to bring someone tomorrow? It's going to be 60 some degrees tomorrow. It get hot up in here. Where's Crystal? Connie, we got to change the plane ticket like right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Jesus, as you're preparing, Father, in Jesus' name, as we sow into this man of God's life, do something special. As we sow into this revival, and what you're doing in our city, do something in him. Enlarge his territory. Enlarge his influence. I declared it Sunday morning, when a man finds a wife, he finds favor with God. Lord, we can't wait to see even increased favor over this next season of Brother Matt. I thank you, God, that young men are rising up and the kingdom in the future looks good. It looks good that you have a remnant of righteous preachers that are not afraid of your spirit, not embarrassed of you. Father, I thank you, Lord, for Pastor Titus and Pastor Brian and the network pastors here, God. We thank you, God, for what you're doing to this. I just feel it, this next generation. Pastors, if you want revival in your church, you sow on the revival. Congregation, if you want a miracle in your life, you sow into that. We, we, we believe that today, Father. 
Lord, bless our brother. Refresh him. Lord, speak to him. Speak to him, God, about tomorrow night. He reverences you. And Lord, we're going to reverence what you're doing here. We speak to the north, the south, the east, the west. Bring the lost. If you bring them, we will love them. If you bring them, we will disciple them. If you bring them, we'll train them to serve you. I declare over every church represented here, God, not just this church, your kingdom, these churches that are here, these pastors for increase, increase of souls, not other Christians, but souls getting saved. We thank you what you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody bless the Lord right now. Come on. Is there any? That's it. There's no announcements, right? We're, we're, it's revival. So please stand to your feet. If you do have an envelope, please bring it and bring it here. Love on folks. Greet. If there's somebody you don't know, tell them who you are. Tell them what church you go to. Bring someone. We will see you tomorrow night. Lord bless you for coming.